These are my best friends in the world. Chance. <laughs> I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. <laughs> Alex. Hi, Wade. So are you. Married, not dead. Did you talk a little? And this is Ricky. My card. My cell phone's on the back. Call me anytime. Thanks. <laughs> well, nice to run into you. strict TV guidelines on, on my TV in my room. So the logo channel was blocked. And if I wanted to watch Noah's Ark, I had to sneak into the living room where there was no TV controls and wait to the wee hours of the night when everybody was asleep and watch it with the volume on super, super low. But it definitely was worth it because seeing those characters just affirmed my identity because I thought I was just like this sinner you know going to hell because that's you know i was raised to believe and seeing these characters have fully realized lives it was kind of like oh wait there is a light at the end of the tunnel like it, it like, this can happen i can be noah in the future so um it definitely was very affirming to me um and it still is to this day in 2005, when Noah's Ark came out, I was 14 years old, living in Utah in a non-queer affirming household. My DVDs of Will and Grace and Noah's Ark were thrown away. My rainbow clothes thrown away. So I would escape. I'd go to my best friend's mom's house. She would let me watch Noah's Ark and she would encourage me to because she felt it was important for me to see representation of the queer community on TV. Um, I got my first job when I was um, 15 years old and I ended up going to um, buy the DVD set, the second um, second season DVD set. Um, I went home and I watched it. Um, my mom had, uh, excuse me, I had the DVDs spread out over the bed. I was all excited. My mom gets home and she sees those DVDs and boy, did she go off. Um, so that it, but it did open up and it segued into a conversation that, you know, really transpired into my coming out story. Hey mom. How are you? There's got to be some hot man crack on this island somewhere. Look, the thing is, I've got something to tell you. Something important. 
That old fat, ugly, needle dick. Nothing. No, Mom. I haven't gotten Myla pregnant. We're just friends. Look, the thing is, I'm gay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> That Noah's Ark came out in 2005 and I was about 11 at the time. I didn't come across the show until I was about 19, 20. And um, I remember being at home, searching in Google, black gay TV shows or films, and it was one of the first things that came up in my search. And as soon as I watched the first episode, I was hooked. I was in love. I was just like, oh my God, finally, people like me on TV. It was like, yes. This is what I've been seeking. During that time, I couldn't articulate what I was, what it was. But once that show came around, it truly reflected everything. Four black gay men laughing, kikiing together, uh, sharing together, arguing together, a real communion, a real family. And they had their own language. What's the dagaga? Bish, what's the tea? You know? <laughs> language that even you know i automatically knew what they meant you know i didn't need it explained to me go in bitch let have what's wrong i can't do it what do you mean noah you got your brown sugar where's the brown sugar at, girl chance what's the gaga huh bitch what's the tea it's not fair to say this guy wouldn't like romeo because he's a queen a lot of masculine guys like him with a tank full of sugar right pookie that's right baby What's going on? I'm Justin Simeon, uh, filmmaker and creator behind Dear White People, an upcoming movie, Bad Hair. I just wanted to say I am so, so geeked about this reunion. Noah's Ark and really so much of uh, what Patrick Ian Polk, what you've made, has been so meaningful for me in ways that I, I don't think I can ever really put into words. You know, um, Noah's Ark is a show, the only show the only thing out there in the culture that was telling me that I belonged in the culture and that my lived experiences as a queer black man were worth telling stories about, that I was worth telling stories about, that, you know, putting myself in my work uh, it shouldn't be this forbidden thing that I have to sort of keep avoiding in order to make it in the industry. Um, and I'm just so, so grateful to the show uh, and to you, Patrick, and everything you do, and your energy, and your spirit, and your voice. Um, I don't know, what character am I? I? You know, I wish I was a Noah. <laughs> I wish I could be that cute all the time. <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably an Alex. I mean, he, he, that shady, shady, shady Alex. That He made me guffaw the most, uh, and was always saying a version of what I was thinking. Um, but I love all of you. Thank you so much for being there uh, for me and so many people like me who really, really needed to see themselves in the culture um, at a seminal time in their lives uh, and have a beautiful, beautiful and blessed reunion. Is that all y'all done while me and my man's been sweating way back there? Damn, y'all some lazy bitches. To see Noah's Ark, the first black gay series come on TV was groundbreaking. This was something that I've been wanting to see come on TV for a long time. You have four black gay best friends living life, dealing with day-to-day -day issues and overcoming them. I could see myself relate and identify with the characters. But the best part of the shows every week for me was seeing my big brother Rodney play the character of Alex and bring the character to life. I was so overjoyed and excited and happy. To Patrick, thank you for writing and creating a show that was educational, motivating, and enlightening. To the cast of Noah's Ark, happy 15th anniversary. So the one that I related the most with was Ricky. You know, I like to party. I do whatever I feel like doing, and I really give a shit about other people sometimes. Um, but part of it is because that's a mechanism, like... A, uh, defense mechanism in the sense of like I don't like to be vulnerable I don't like to show emotion so I use those things to avoid it and so that way people don't don't see it so that's why sometimes I kind of relate with him what's so funny I figure something out why you do what you do all the sex it's 
Just a distraction. From what? The truth. And what truth would that be exactly? That you're in love with Noah. As Ricky was unapologetically him, he was very protective over everybody in his crew. And he was also misunderstood. It wasn't until the movie that we actually got to understand why Ricky was the way he was because he was in love with Noah and nobody threatened or questioned him about that. You mean, I love you. Not as a friend or as a girlfriend. More than that. And every guy I meet pales in comparison. They're just bodies. I love you. And the words burn in my mouth because I know you don't love me. Ricky, not that way, I know. And I, I think about Chance, you know, trying to make things work with Eddie and, and how he, you know, even stepped back and tried to be like this, this homo thug, which is so crazy to me. Um, and I think about being a freshman at Morehouse and like going through all these different phases of uh, the type of gay that I thought I was gonna be. And I realized that the only one I could be is just myself. But it took it took me watching stories like Noah's and, and, and Ricky and Chance and, and Alex and, and Wade and everyone, all the characters that were on the show really gave me guidance. China, thanks so much. What are you doing here, Eddie? Let's do it right this time. None of this moving in stuff. So the character or characters that I relate to the most via Noah's arc would be Noah and Wade. Noah for number one, his hair. In every episode, I swear, especially the first season. Second season, of course, second season had its moments. But that first season of just seeing those beautiful locks and curls and how it just flowed, it just made his character stand out. It was his crown uh, and his talent. I think Daryl Stevens really personified what that type of persona meant during the early 2000s. Uh, and then Wade, for certain, uh, Jensen Atwood, I think he just really brought it home um i it, it for me being a bisexual black man and being open about it and, and not being ashamed of being proud of who i am i think to see how his role played out and to see the ambiguity of having to navigate what that looks like especially during the early 2000s i mean it for a black man to be able to do that and to have so much class and to be so beautiful uh i just I think those two characters really were relatable to me and I absolutely loved it. The character that I relate to the most on Noah's arc is Noah. He is an aspiring screenwriter. I think I have the perfect job for you. A rewrite on this action project we're developing for Vin Diesel. It's good, but Vin wants it to have more of an edge. A lot of people don't know this, but Vin started out doing indie films. Really? Vin Diesel? Wow. We think you're the perfect writer to give it that hip but sensitive edge. He is a hopeless romantic. He is funny, but he's also complicated. He's smart and he's messy. And, you know, he is all the things that I know I am. <laughs> um, and, I, and I love him. You know, I think that he is someone who you root for. Um, you want to see him be successful. Um, and I saw so much of myself and my journey in, in Noah's journey. The role models um, and a lot of young queer boys, uh, queer men my age, um, didn't have role models, didn't have people to look to to say, okay, this is what you need to know about sex. This is what you need to know about dating. Uh, this is what you need to know about navigating relationships uh, in, in the world. This is what you need to know about navigating the professional world. And so in many ways, Noah's Ark was an introductory course on Black queer life for me. Uh, 
Hey, what's up everybody? Congratulations, Mr. Patrick Ian Polk, the innovator, the originator, uh, creator of Noah's Ark. I'm so happy for you guys that you're all getting back together after all these years. I know I, for one, will be watching. Patrick, I wanna say thank you to you for being a pioneer in this space because you were writing black LGBT characters before people were even checking for it. You were just a visionary and so brave and so authentic to put real, um, funny, smart, complex and complicated characters in your work uh, from punks to Noah's Ark to Blackbird, all of your work. You are a legend. You are tremendous. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. And I can't wait to watch tonight. To Patrick. Oh my gosh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Jensen. And thank you to all of the cast and the crew that was brave enough to allow this story to be told. Happy 15th anniversary. Patrick should be very proud of what he has put into the atmosphere. It is nostalgic, it's iconic, it's historic, and it will forever be a part of our history. So congratulations to Patrick Ian Polk for all of your work with Noah's Ark, all the NAACP Image Award nominations and your Freedom Writer Award from the LA Outfest. Ooh, just so much going on. And I hope you know, Patrick, that every day that you wake up, new people are finding your work and other people are reviewing Noah's Ark and finding inspiration in ourselves to be better black gay men. Thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful cast, this beautiful work for being the first black gay show on Logo TV. You deserve all of your flowers and for the continued work that you do. I just wish you the best. Continue pumping out this great work. We need it so much right now. So thank you for 15 years and beyond of Noah's Ark. I cannot wait to see what happens next. And so Patrick Ian Polk, um, I commend you, I salute you. I know uh, people come up to you and reach out to you all the time and say how Noah's Ark has changed their life and how it has benefited them. But truly, 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 it was before its time. I mean, it should not have ended. It should come back because it really, really um, helped my generation when I was coming up to learn about gay issues or the HIV, um, Patrick Ian Polk, thank you for creating one of the shows that has had the most profound impact on me as a person. Thank you for creating one of the funniest shows in television history. By it being two seasons and a movie, the the impact that it had in that that moment was well beyond. I, I'm sure any any of the creative team or the or the performers could imagine. So I'm thankful for the precedent that is set. Um, and for the doors that it opened uh, and more conversations, so. Patrick Ian Polk, you are a trailblazer. You are and continue to be so ahead of the game. I have to say thank you for creating Noah's Ark. In many ways, Poe's rests on the shoulders of the work that you did. Noah's Ark really centered queer, Black and Latin men at a time where it wasn't in vogue, where no one else was doing that and really served as a blueprint for me in making those same choices in my own work. So for that, I thank you. When I dream.